Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company, and we are taking a look at the Colt Bisley today. This is the target model, or target version, of the Colt 1873 Single Action Army Revolver. The Single Action Army was, as the name implies, it was intended as a military service revolver. It was chambered for the 45 Colts cartridge, big hefty cartridge, especially by European revolver standards at the time. Uh, and it turned out to be wildly successful. It was a very popular pistol, they were well made, they were just really well liked by everyone who had them. And so it shouldn't come as a surprise that people started looking for uh, options with the Colt Single Action Army to do other things, like target shooting. So uh, as early as 1890 Colt introduced a flat top target version of the Single Action Army. They would sell almost a thousand of these by 1895, and then they dropped it for the Bisley model. So at this point they decided there is enough market for a, a target version of this gun, let's make a few changes and really make it a little more ideal as a target gun, uh, specifically changes to the grip, the trigger, and the hammer. And they would go ahead and release this in 1895, or in 1894, I'm sorry, uh, and they would produce, well, almost 44, well more than 44,000 of the standard Bisley model, and about a thousand more of the Bisley target model. There are actually two different versions. We have the regular Bisley and the Bisley target. So let's take a closer look at those and see how they differ from the standard single action army and how they differ from each other. Here's our whole progression from a standard single action army to a typical standard Bisley model to a target Bisley model. The Bisley name of course comes from the name of the British or English Bisley shooting range where a whole bunch of uh, very very famous and very significant shooting matches were held. This is similar to, uh, well later Colt would come out with the Camp Perry model, a, another a 22 caliber in that case target pistol named for an American target shooting range. Um, at any rate, uh, Colt was, was heavily involved in not just American sales and competition at that time, but also worldwide sales. It was a worldwide recognized name, and you would find people uh, eagerly buying and shooting Colt revolvers everywhere, including England. So. Uh, you can see kind of some of the, the basic, the most obvious modifications here. The standard single action army has what's called kind of a, a plow's head grip. And part of the idea of this grip is that the gun would actually rotate. It would roll back in your hand upon firing, which would bring your thumb uh, nicely up towards the hammer to recock it to fire again. That was great for a service type revolver, but it wasn't really the ideal situation for a target revolver. When you're in serious target shooting competition, one of the things that you want to do is maintain the exact same grip on the gun. Everything for accuracy is based on consistency. And if you're shifting your grip between shots, you're going to be less consistent and you're going to be less accurate. So the idea with this redesigned grip was actually to prevent the gun from moving in your hand, so that every, every shot would effectively be the same. Get rid of this rolling um, action of the standard gun. That would, of course, give you this question of, well, then how do you reach the hammer? If, you know, if, if the gun's not moving, you need to be able to reach the hammer from a firing grip, or else you're going to have to shift your grip anyway just to recock the gun. And so Colt reshaped the hammer on the Bisley model to drop it significantly. They also made it a bit wider. We can compare that to a standard single action army here. So with the Bisley model, you can grip you can get to the hammer and recock the gun from a standard firing grip without any real trouble. They also went ahead and widened the trigger. You can see that the trigger on the original single action army is actually really narrow and interestingly off center. Uh, on the Bisley model for target shooters, they made it wider, uh, basically as wide as the whole trigger guard itself. And that's going to give you uh, more repeatability and more comfort in, uh, in having a nice consistent trigger press. As for the sights, however, they remained on the standard Bisley model identical to the single action army, all the, all the regular sights. So you had a little notch back here in the top strap, and you had this semicircular rounded front post. These are fixed sights, so you could file on this a little bit to change the elevation if necessary. You could maybe do the same to widen the rear notch to one side or the other to change the windage a bit. But in general, however this shot from the factory is what you are going to be stuck with. Well, if you weren't satisfied with that, then your option was the Bisley target model. On the target model, you got this flat top style of 
uh, frame, and it has a wider, much better rear notch here, which is actually dovetailed into that top strap. So you can adjust this rear sight side to side to get exact windage for whatever load you're shooting. It also has an elevation adjustable front sight. You can loosen that screw and then adjust this front blade uh, up or down to get the exact elevation that you need. So the Bisley target model allowed you to actually really perfectly zero the gun uh, to whatever cartridges you were using. So a definite advantage. I do find it interesting that the standard Bisley massively outsold the target model. I don't have the pricing numbers on hand, I'm sure those must have uh, played a big part in it, but a whopping 44,350 of the Bisleys were made, but only 976 of the Bisley targets. As with all of Colt's other revolvers, you could get a lot of different options on these guns. Uh, you could get different finishes. You'll notice this one has a case-hardened frame, this one has a blued frame to it. Uh, you could get different barrel lengths. Uh, you could go from 3 inch up to 7.5 inch barrel lengths. Although on the, the Bisley models we see a lot less variation than in standard single action armies. Because these were intended as target guns, uh, a significant majority of them have 7.5 inch barrels, which is what you see in these two. You could also get them in a huge variety of different cartridges. So uh, the most common cartridge in the standard single action army was probably the 45 Colts. Uh, but when it came to target shooting, the cartridges tended to skew towards the smaller end. So uh, almost a full third of these were actually made in 3220, including this one. So if we look at the, uh, the front end there, you can see that these are quite a bit smaller holes in that cylinder than this guy. So our standard Bisley here is a 45 Colt. This is a 3220. You know, if you're just target shooting, if you don't need to actually like potentially drop a horse, then why, why deal with the extra recoil and, and the extra powder use of, of a big cartridge like the 45? Get a, a smaller cartridge that's easier to control. Um, that's kind of always been a thing for target shooting. The markings are the same on both the Bisley and the Bisley target. A standard uh, single action army will just have the caliber marked here on the barrel. The Bisley models all also have in parentheses Bisley model uh, printed right out there. It's pretty faint, uh, but you can see it. And then they have the other standard Colt markings. So Colt's Patent Firearm Manufacturing Company, Hartford, Connecticut, USA. Relevant patent dates and the Colt Pony logo. And then you'll find serial numbers uh, on most of the parts, including uh, here on the frame and the trigger guard. I should point out that there is no specific serial number range for Bisley model guns. They didn't receive now they were they were numbered just in with all of the other standard single action armies. So you will find them between 156,000 and about 332,000. So this is actually one of the very last ones made. It's right at the top end of that serial range. Here's our target model. Uh, same marking, just says Bisley model. There's no differentiation with the target and the standard. But this one is in 32 Winchester Centerfire, or 3220. Just for the record, the most common cartridge, as I said, was 3220. 32 WCF for these with about 13,000 made. Uh, next most common was 3840 with about the same number, about 12,000 made. Uh, after that was 45 Colt, even in the, the target model, or even in the, you know, the, the Bisley target style guns. After that was 4440, and then you got a whole smattering of other cartridges. Uh, 32 Colt, 32 Smith & Wesson, 3244, 38 Colt, 38 Special, 3844, uh, 41 Colt, 44 Russian, 450 Ely, 455 Ely, for some of the British guys, presumably shooting at Bisley, um, and then even uh, other cartridges that were even less common. Production of the Bisley model ended in 1912, although that did leave Colt with a, a bunch of the guns and the parts still in inventory, and so they would continue to list and sell them. And the last Bisley model was actually shipped in 1919. So for a total of about 30 years, these guns were available. Now, if you look at the Bisley target, even there, it's, it's really not that ideal of a target gun. It may be the best you can make out of a single action army for that purpose, but that rear sight is, you have to like hit it with a punch to adjust it. You'd be much better off with something that was, say, screw adjustable. So you could just fine tune it to get it just right. And so, of course, newer and better target type guns would come along. Uh, an interesting anecdote uh, Pancho Villa, 
uh, his actually his preferred favorite revolver was in fact a Colt Bisley model. Um, interestingly, it was a relatively short barreled Bisley with a five and a half inch barrel, and he stuck mother of pearl grips on it. But uh, you can actually find some pictures of him carrying that gun, and it is. As far as I can tell, pretty undisputedly his favorite pistol. So I have to admit, the Bisley model is also my favorite style of Colt single action army. So I thought it was pretty cool to have a chance to take a look at both the regular Bisley and the target model Bisley, and bring them to you. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you'd like to find out more about these, check out Rock Island's catalog page. Uh, you can find that through their website. There's a link in the description below to my website, which then has a link to the catalog pages for these two, and there are a number of other Bisleys, and of course a whole mess of Colt single action armies in Rock Island's next auction. Thanks for watching.